Combat Sims. See, I have a few here. Most of them I keep getting is a will. Now, if you're going to be up front and up front a lot, maybe dodge is a good skill. Because then you won't get hit as much. And when you do get hit, there's a high chance you just get grazed. That is pretty huge. Only problem now is your armor does not protect you from wounds. In previous games, if only the armor got damaged, you weren't wounded. Now, that's not the case. But by taking even one damage, your soldier is wounded. Be careful with that, because even if your armor is giving you, we'll say, four, but I think six is what this armor gives you for life, for extra health. If you take five damage, you're you're wounded. You're, you're not protected by your armor. I think it's an oversight from the previous game. But here, yes, if you got extra mobility, if you had, uh, that would be huge. And even for your scout build, mobility would be huge because now you can move farther and scout even farther with that concealment. But there's a few ways to actually make that a really big advantage early game to scout out the map. We'll do that with loadout. Now, for the armor, I have a few choices. You gave a wraith suit to him. Now, you can also do the same. I don't know if I still have a don't have the other armors. Like, well, I just didn't bother getting them because I knew Wraith suits were better. So you get extra dodge, which is awesome. You get six health, same as a Predator armor, that you lose that one armor to protect you from a one point of damage guaranteed. But then you gain dodge instead and plus two uh, mobility, which is pretty huge. Plus two mobility makes a big difference. Now, what's nice about this armor, so if you look on the side, you get grapple. Grapple hook is huge. If you want to get that extra movement, it doesn't cost an AP. That is amazing. So you could move your, in this case, you can move your first AP value, which is your blue zone, and then use grappling hook if there's a building or a car or anything nearby that you suspect doesn't have any enemies that can see you just yet. So then you get an extra move after that to further scout the map. So that means you've probably moved somewhere along the lines of 20, maybe even 25, because a grappling hook is pretty far. If you count in the height and the fact that there's obstacles in your way, that is huge to get to where you got to go. And that is the same thought for if you're a blade master. If you can get in closer to those enemies and hit them with your blade, but regardless, I would highly recommend with a ranger, go with a wraith suit. And then with the wraith ability, you actually go through obstacles. You could go through a wall, you can go through rocks, anything in your way which even further increases your mobility. And again, does not use an AP to activate. Huge impact. Now, if you were gonna go with a war suit, we'll cover that because I just covered the Wraith suit. The war suit is pretty amazing because you get shield wall. So it provides um, high cover to you and your squad mate. I am almost positive that you will still get full cover and this is handy when you're trying to cross a really far area with no cover. Only problem is, you lose a turn with this character. You cannot use this character at all for that turn or it'll cancel out the shield wall. The nice thing about this is you actually get plus two armor with this one instead of the warden's armor one. The two is pretty good, but really what makes this stand out, one side effect of the wraith armor, you lose out a utility item. Be ready that if you're going to be using a Wraith suit compared to the Warden armor or the Predator armor, you lose out a utility item. Not too bad, but if you rely on those that extra grenade with a character or an extra Mimic Beacon with a character, can be a pretty big deal with your playstyle. With the War suit, you also lose that one utility item. The nice thing is you get a Heavy Weapon item, which does not count as a grenade. If you really want to go grenade heavy and explosive heavy, you can still carry your grenade, which I have a few now, and have a heavy weapon, a heavy explosive, which the range is insane. 27 is huge. You may not think of it if you're you're just like picturing it in your head now. That's 27 squares. Huge, and the radius is four, so it's bigger than the normal grenade. Damage on that one is, is not great, but I mean, four to seven, it's still, it's an extra explosive you did not have. So it's an extra way to destroy enemy cover. It's an extra way to hit a group of enemies from a far range. I really like this suit, just not on this class specifically because of the loss of mobility. And I use that class to scout. But this is a viable armor. I could go with six armors of this because then you're keeping everybody together and you're just mowing down enemies. Uh, you have a lot of 
choices and basically all these items or not all most of these items have a skill counterpart on another class that is pretty close to what the, this heavy weapon does but you only get one use of these weapons per fight now rocket launcher is the standard uh, you have unlimited of these you have a flamethrower the range is pretty similar to the rocket now the radius it says seven but really i think seven is at the end you have like a, a seven wide at first you'll have one then two and then maybe two again and three like it it, it goes into a cone but pretty far cone only problem is if there's any cover in the way it'll more likely burn the cover and not hit the enemy depends on the cover uh, the damage is nice and i'm pretty sure it will burn them almost positive it will burn the enemy unless they're immune and it does not hit robotic enemies it says in the description below there's a chance that they panic panic is pretty important but this is a lot harder to use especially if you play with your characters kind of in between that soldier that has the flamethrower so you'd want that character to be on your front line the plasma blaster is almost the exact same as the psionic lance it's a straight through attack so the range is still about the same as the flamethrower 25 it's still pretty far you just have to make sure that you can line up those enemies in one line it's just a one radius the whole way through yeah straight line i don't know why it says radius 12 it's a straight line just just one line through so be careful with the description there plasma blaster is nice but there's a lot better abilities and skills out there the nice thing about it is it goes through cover this time so you can shoot it through a wall which i've done in some of my highlights hellfire projector i've only used this one once or twice it's an upgraded flamethrower but this time it leaves like giant pillars of flame not just like a bit of fire there which i think either does more damage or really deters the enemy from moving through so you can actually block a path and then the enemy has to go through a different way to get to you which can be very handy uh, again it's um robotic enemies are resistant i guess i saw a mod out there that lets you pick what you bought what you get for the most part for me this has all been random so I, there may even be other weapons out there that i don't have access to or have not even tried yet if it wasn't random it would be pretty broken and i would just get all of the same probably blaster launcher or shred storm cannon blaster launcher have you guys played enemy within that blaster rocket launcher was amazing you can shoot it from let's say you're on a rooftop you try to shoot somebody that's like you're on the third floor or like equivalent to the third floor because you're on a on the roof of a two-story building and you want to get that guy that's just beneath you and you're like oh i can't move i've already moved he's right beneath me on the first floor you can shoot that go through a window and then it will hit that guy at the bottom and probably not break your roof it might break the second floor but not break the roof and that is crazy it is so accurate i have one where it just this alone the blaster launcher alone killed the beacon i needed in my base defense it, it, it completed the map in one turn basically from the start point the range is insane 45 range i guess the 45 range is to account the fact that it has to loop around stuff and get places but if you're doing a straight shot 45 that is huge amazing blaster launcher if you can get more than one definitely this is an easy one to use and to add to your party it is just fantastic red storm cannon if it wasn't for the blaster launcher this would be my first pick it basically does the it basically does the same thing as the hellfire cannon or the flamethrower where it's a cone of of damage now it says radius 12 i don't know if the radius is bigger towards the end Considering that this is a 12 radius and it's only a 1 radius, I don't get it. But it basically shoots a cannon of flak, of, of shredded bullets and shredded pieces of material. So it's like an artillery going forward, like a giant shotgun hit. And it goes through cover, destroys cover, destroys armor. It is amazing. I don't even know why it doesn't say, it doesn't have any more information. It doesn't say how much it shreds through armor i'm pretty sure it does five or even six damage to armor if you're having a hard time with armored targets like sectopods um big daddies andromedas gatekeepers this even mechs 
this will shred right through that armor. They'll have no armor in one turn. And if you can line up two or three of them, this could potentially kill an entire group on normal in one hit near endgame. Amazing, amazing weapon. I highly recommend this. Now, as far as weapons, he's using assault rifle right now, which is a plasma rifle, which does 7 to 9 damage. The storm gun does 8 to 10. So just that one extra damage, but the crit chance is higher by 20. So just that crit chance alone can boost your damage by quite a bit, especially when you're in melee range or you're flanking. You even have a higher chance to crit. This is where the shotgun just does more damage. And for your swords, they're pretty linear. This one I mean, does more damage by one and a higher crit chance. Yeah. The thing is, the arc blade can stun. 25% chance to stun is pretty huge. On the lancers, it seems like it's uh, imbalanced and it needs to be patched. They seem to stun me or put me unconscious every time or almost every time they hit. So I could recommend this if it worked as much as it does on a Lancer. This will put them on fire. So it's actually nice. So if you're fighting an organic enemy, it'll actually do more damage. So there's a chance that you hit it, it lives with 1 or 2 HP. La next turn, it dies. So I do recommend this. Uh, if you're going to be using a blade, just straight upgrade it. The sword, the basic swords is not that good. Too bad you can't use sidearms. I would definitely consider sidearms. But... The only class that gets a sidearm, really, is the sniper. So here, let's talk weapon upgrades. The main reason I'm also using a rifle is I got lucky with the Advanced Warfare Center, and I got the Death from Above. You see it here? This is a random skill that I put on. I didn't get to pick it. It was just random. He was lucky to get it. Killing an enemy that's lower than you will give you another action, which is amazing. In theory, you can use this with Rapid Fire, Rapid fire only costs one action, two bullets. If you kill something, it won't reset your turn. So you can sit there, shoot at two, three different targets, as long as you have ammo in your gun. So this could change how you play your class with those random skills that come in. And that's probably why I put an expanded magazine, because I, I get more bullets. Increased aim is always good. If you can get these on almost all of your soldiers, I would highly recommend it. The superior scope, plus 15 aim, it's almost a game changer, especially when you start using height advantage. You almost get a 100% chance to aim on anything, except if they're behind full cover and certain enemies behind light cover, you won't get 100%, but it definitely improves your chance to hit. Some of these things you can get. A guaranteed three damage if you miss. That is pretty good on characters or classes that don't hit very often. Maybe a class that does a lot of Overwatch or Grenadiers. If you're not investing too many points in on their aim, then maybe get a stock that way you guarantee three damage so then when you see those targets on the the, the field you're like okay well what do i do to kill this one well if you have a guaranteed three damage doesn't matter what the aim is on it it's behind full cover shoot it it dies and it's got good use out of it then you have superior hair trigger that 15 percent bonus action is really nice if i was playing a shotgun wielding character I would not put the scope on because I would always try to flank and be really close to the enemy. I'd put a superior hair trigger on on my weapon and a laser sight. The laser sight would increase your crit, so then you'd be hitting probably for like 60, 80% chance to crit with the target and then get those those kills more often. Get a second shot with that hair trigger, then bonus, you get two shots, but I think that would be a good build for a shotgun. Uh, you have the auto loaders, which gives you three free reloads. That is very big for classes that use up a lot of ammo. So if you're using rapid fire a lot, I would go with probably the auto loader or okay, to have the extended mag. Both options would be good. Just make sure you can manage that aim. So if you don't need that superior scope, then maybe replace it with the auto loader and you can rapid fire even more often. But then you're playing a dangerous game of with your aim. That'll be it for this part one. Sorry it took 38 minutes. We'll move on to a different class. It won't take as long. That is it for the Ranger. Hopefully I covered as much as I can.